Welcome back to John's Films. Have you ever lost footage? I recently was looking for some b-roll I knew would be perfect, but I couldn't find it. Now, I remembered I'd used it in a video, but I couldn't find where that video was archived. So today, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to look at how to recover some of the footage that you may think you've lost from videos you've made in the past. And the second thing we're going to do is review what you should do to properly archive your projects. Let's check it out. I had some great b-roll I wanted to use, but I can't find the source footage. However, I remember I used it in a prior video. So I'm going to hit Shift 2, which takes me back to my media pool. And in the media pool, I can browse to where I rendered that prior video. And now, here it is, my camping footage, and I wanted one of the drone shots out of here. But I don't really want to pull this in and then have to go find it and source it out. So I'm going to right-click and go to Scene Cut Detection. Now, it started processing in this new window it popped up, and it's drawing lines, green lines, everywhere it believes there to be a scene cut. And a confidence value could be determined by how high this line is. So when a line goes the entire width of the panel here, it's darn certain that there's a cut in the scene. And when it's really low down here, it's a lower confidence. And I can move this purple line up or down to include that cut or to skip over it. And when it gets done processing, I get to make a call as to where all of these is going to be split open. As it's processing, let's look at it. And you can see this is absolutely running in our graphics card. 2080 Ti is 80% eaten up by this process. Pretty cool to see. So if we look here on the right side of this window, you see Add Cuts to Media Pool, and it's got all of the cuts, and I can cycle through them to determine if those really are cuts. Now something I just saw is that this clip and this clip are the same clip. So I can scroll up above that cut right there, and now those cuts are gone. So I'm going to add the cuts to the media pool, and immediately in the background back here, you can see, I'm going to shut this window, and processor drop back down, and now all of a sudden I've got a ton of cuts in here. This allows me to pull out the individual, here we go, drone footage I might have been looking for. And sure enough, there it is, from the composite video, split out into a whole bunch of different splits for me. Pretty cool feature. Now... The second thing we were talking about. What do we do when we're done with a video and we want to move it off of a drive? We have a few options. I'm going to go up and go to Media Manage. Now this is also where you might go to transcode footage so that you could split it out into other footage and make it easier for the computer to deal with or maybe even smaller for it to be stored in a smaller format. Now, I've got one clip currently selected because I had it highlighted. But I can also do the entire timelines or an entire project. Now I have a choice. When I move media, do I move it, do I copy it, or do I transcode it? For the archiving purpose, I'm going to move it. And in this case, I had a bunch of B-roll hanging on the floor. I had a whole bunch of stuff I didn't need to use. So I'm going to click move, use only the used media files. And that allows me to use the media files that have been added into this media pool. And I get to choose an output destination. For me, I put that in my bulk storage drive. And you can see some of the prior videos that I have shot out there. And the last option I could use would be, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to want the full files that I've shot. Instead, I'd like to just use uh, the, the video media that I've used specifically in my trim. And then I want to keep maybe five file frame handles on either side of it so that I've got a little bit of room for sliding in and out, or maybe 120. That would give me four seconds at 30 frames a second, and that would be a pretty good option. There's some further options here where I can merge a lot of it into one file, preserve a hierarchy of the folder, or even delete unused media so that I don't have to go back after this process and do it. After that, it'll show you what your new size is expected to be on disk. Note, if I use just the used media in this project, it drops down from 2 gigs to 775 megabytes. When I click Start, it'll go off and process and drop it in there. This is the best solution I've found 
to be able to quickly and easily ensure that everything you've touched inside a project gets saved, archived, and moved off of your primary project work disk to get back to a backup disk. There we go. So we've seen two things that we can do. The first, a way to get back snippets of previously used footage. And the second thing, how we should deal with our footage going forward. Please leave me a comment if you've got ideas that you'd like to see in upcoming videos. And click subscribe so that you can keep getting more content like this. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.